Hi folks, it's been a long time in the making but I'm happy to present my first kimono base pattern. This video is intended to be used as a companion piece to the PDF document. It's possible to use this as a standalone guide on how I do my build process, however the pattern is not included in this video. To start with, we need to gather our tools and materials. Print the PDF document out to 100% scale and cut out the pattern. You don't need to print out the instructions if you don't want to, as there is a separate pattern only document if you wish to save on ink and paper. I use contact adhesive and Super 77. I prefer Ortec, but Evo Stick works too. As I use this type of bond, you'll notice I break out the tin occasionally, jump around a little. This type of glue needs a setup time, so I jump back and forth to fill that time with cutting other bits. After you've got the pattern cut, you'll need to start tracing it onto the foam. Each pattern piece is labelled with material and material thickness. Some of them have multiple material options, you'll need to decide which ones you would like to use depending on the look you're after. You will need to transfer all of the pattern markings onto the foam as well, for example the cuff top marks on the upper muzzle. Tracing the centre line is a must too. This will help with your symmetry. You'll see I break out the iron here to prepare the foss shape I use for the ears in advance. Once you've got every part cut out, if you've not already done so, it's good practice to tidy your workspace and bag up any scraps as you go. You can use these scraps later to stuff things like duct tape dummies or chop it finely to stuff things like tails and padding in addition to polyfill. Now it's time to start assembly. In the PDF you might notice that I start with sculpting the outer muzzle. However, you can also start with the base layer like I do in this video. You will need to glue the outer muzzle onto the base layer prior to closing the back seam with this specific pattern. If you start with an EVA base layer, you will also need to stabilise the chin with a small crescent shaped piece of EVA. You can make this shape by tracing the curve of the chin during assembly. It's possible to heat shape the jaw area instead, however the crescent shaped insert will stop any possible splaying completely. Here I move on to sculpting the muzzle. When hollowing the muzzle, it's easier to work in halves. You don't need to hollow it for kimono, however, having that extra space in such a small muzzle is very handy for possible fans or just having a larger vent. You can see any pattern markings that get cut off in the shaping, I draw back on as a guide. After shaping the inside of the outer muzzle, we can now glue the two halves together. Shaping the outside follows. Most of this shaping is just trimming small bits off until you find the form pleasing. Once you like the shape, go ahead and cut the portion marked cut off. This small cut off lets the muzzle angle change subtly downwards and gives a larger surface area for gluing. Now we take this piece, line it up to the centre line on the base and glue this to the base foam. The mouth cross section will line up flush around the hole on the base layer. If you're using EVA as a base layer, you can construct this type of head without needing a head form. You may need one later for your patterning, however you can get a jump start on the foaming. I now put this to the side on my head form. After putting that to the side, I now do some pre-shaping to the lower cheek pieces. These parts need a taper cut to 10 to 15 millimeters, that's roughly half an inch. The slope from the marked arrow portion is important. It can be slightly deeper but no narrower than 10 millimeters, or it will not line up to the lower jaw. These parts need to first be glued to the outer muzzle and then down to the base layer. The glue guidelines will help you place these correctly. The lower edge will hang off the base layer roughly by about 10 to 15 millimeters. This is intentional and can be cut off later if desired. You can now see the little slot the lower jaw will sit in. The upper cheek pieces now get glued on in the same manner. You can pre-shape these before gluing, but it's best to do so later if you're new to this pattern or building in general. Since I use contact adhesive, I can stick this to the side to fully set up and move on to shaping the lower jaw. I hollow it as well, a bit fiddly, but it means I can recess the teeth. I then test fit it, trim it back a little at the back, and then glue it down when I find the position I want. In this case, I was going for manic happy. I usually take the time to attack the cheek carving now. 
The carving I do to these now will mostly be final, however when the other parts are on I will double check and do a final carving. I work with the brow pieces as one. You'll note the different sizes of foam here. This is so I don't waste material. I taper the nose bridge down and pre-trim along all the top edges aside from the temple edge. I could cut this out of one piece of 1.5 inch foam, but it would be rather wasteful for this pattern. After it's all carved and is one piece, I then glue it to the base layer using all my previously drawn guidelines on both the cheeks and the base layer, starting with the bridge and the centre line and working my way back. It's now at this point. If you've not already made your eyes, you need to do so now. After you've made them, you can position them and make any adjustments to the eye sockets you need to. I use them to mark the position and do the final carve. I've temporarily taped my painted eye mesh on so I can see if the position of the highlights isn't off. I'll glue them down later. I go over and double check things are symmetric and adjust as needed. Once I'm happy, I cut off the back of the head base layer following the cheeks. It is now a faceplate. If you want to keep it as a bucket base, you might want to add a 1.5 inch strip of foam joining the headband to the back centre seam. You might also want to cut a curve out of the bottom of the back so it's easier to put on and less bulky around the back of the neck. Sometimes I make ears before, sometimes after. In this case, before. I'm using a material called Foss Shape, which is really nice for making ridged thin ears that don't break. I've already pre-shrunk the material and heat shaped it. You can use any number of materials from foam to warbler depending on the look you want. I favour a more realistic ear so thinner is preferred for me. As it's kimono, I want a slightly thicker perimeter for the ear. I round off the edges and taper the foam to the ear tips. At this point, I pin them and the cheek flanges to see if I like the look. I dry fit all of the components before I move on. It's a good idea to take a step back, take a break and come back with fresh eyes. You'll see any changes you want to make easier after that. The teeth were glued using the guidelines on the liner pattern. Sewing the tongue is next. I sew around the perimeter completely. I do not leave a gap. Once sewn, I cut a small slit for stuffing from the centre on the underside of the tongue. This is then stuffed and then sewn shut with a small whip stitch. Without cutting the thread, I sew a small running stitch along the middle of the tongue for the crease. I stick this to the side so I can sew the liner together matching all the pattern markings. The mouth lining pattern was drafted using tape if you wish to make your own version. I use either a ladder stitch or a small whip stitch here. The teeth and nose on this base are made of UV resin. I'll have a video out in the future about that as it's a more advanced finishing technique. I have however included instructions for a variety of methods in the PDF document. This faceplate base can be treated exactly the same as a resin head or cast foam base as they are the same type of head system. I repeat the running stitch on the tongue again to secure it to the liner. This means that the stuffing seam is completely hidden and the tongue is firmly attached. Once the liner is constructed, I install it with Super 77 and contact adhesive. Hot glue works too, but I don't use it often as I tend to burn myself on such a fiddly area. It is not necessary to line the rest of the head. In some cases, mould can grow inside a head between the liner if the head is not properly dried after use and cleaning. Linings are normally done for aesthetic reasons or for comfort for sensory issues. Regardless, a balaclava should be worn to wick sweat away from the suit and your skin. It's now at this point, with everything glued, you're done. Here's a finished example of a head made from this base, with no alteration to the base pattern. This head is currently up for auction at the time this video goes live, so if you're interested, this cutie can be yours. Full details are linked below. You can find my PDF pattern available to purchase on my Etsy shop if you would like to give this a go. If you do, please use the hashtag MadeWithMishwars, I'd love to see what you make. Please be aware, this is a digital PDF pattern, there are no physical materials supplied and you must purchase these separately. 
I've added a very helpful link to our website called firsthoopmaterials.com where you can find a database of materials from all over the world. I hope you guys found this helpful and thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.